there is no greeting, there is no introduction, there is only salvation, and in this video we'll set up the popular arcade light gun game, Terminator Salvation. We'll not only set this game up, but I'll show you how to configure this arcade to be demoed using a keyboard and mouse, then we'll move to a standard controller, then a Sindon light gun, and at the end, we'll have our final thoughts on this arcade and these setups. Be sure to stay till the end, but before we can continue with today's guide, we do need our customary legal requirements. This video is for educational purposes only, and is only intended to show you what I've done and what my results are. If you choose to modify your systems using this or any other information I've provided from any video or content I've created, you do so at your own risk. I, this channel, or any person connected to this video will not be held liable for any choices you make with your hardware or software. Modify at your own risk. This video is operating under the assumption that you have TechnoParrot installed, configured, and in working order. If you do not, please do not be concerned, as I happen to have a video discussing that subject in detail, with step-by-step -step instructions on how to do so. Please find links to that video in the description and linked above. This video also assumes that you have legally obtained the needed ROM files. We'd like to remind you that this channel does not support software piracy, and no one associated with this channel will ever provide you with or link to ROM files. Assuming that you have all the needed software downloaded, installed, and configured, we'll need to extract our ROM files into our TechnoParrot ROM folder. To successfully complete this transaction, we'll first want to open the Terminator Salvation ROM file with your favorite zip utility. I'll be using 7-Zip, and I'll be snapping it to the right side of my screen, and when done, I'll be locating the ROM folder in the root of my TechnoParrot directory, and I'll be expanding that folder to the left side of my screen. Once everything is in place, all we must do is drag and drop the Terminator Salvation ROM files into the TechnoParrot directory. The extraction time was about a minute long, and I'll speed this up to help save time. Your time will differ depending on the power of the hardware you are using. Once our ROM files are in the appropriate directory, it will be time to open TechnoParrot. I'd like to point out that I am working with a fully updated TechnoParrot build. The developers on this project seem to be very active, and I do recommend updating your build before configuring. We now click on the hamburger menu and look for the Add Games option. Once found, click on the Add Games option, scroll down to the Terminator Salvation selection, click on that option, then click on the Add Games icon in the center right menu. When done, you'll get kicked back into the arcade library, this is normal. Once here, simply verify that you have Terminator Salvation selected, and from the right side menu, locate and click on the Game Settings option. Next we'll need to tell TechnoParrot where to look for this arcade's executable, we're given a helpful hint in the form of the executable's name at the top. Basically, we need to locate, select, and tell TechnoParrot where the Terminator Salvation executable is located from within the ROM subfolder, and when done, we'll be kicked back into the game settings menu. We now want to work on setting up our visual experience. To do this, we'll wish to match our display resolution. First, I'll simply check what the resolution is of my setup, and we find that I have a monitor that supports a 16 by 9 aspect ratio with a screen resolution of 1920 by 1080 p Moving back to TechnoParrot, I'll uncheck the windowed mode, and because I want to match my display's resolution, I'll also check the custom resolution option, and after doing so, I'll add the resolution of 1920 to my width and 1080 to my height. When done, let's click on the save option. It is now time to set up our controls, and to do so, we'll first click on the controller setup option from the right side menu. When we do so, a new menu will be displayed, and toward the center options, look for the option listed as P1 light gun, and when found, activate the drop-down menu. This drop-down menu will give you a list of compatible devices that should work with this arcade. I'll be selecting the Windows mouse cursor at this time, as I wish to use my keyboard and mouse as the controller. Next, I'll start at the top and work my way down, assigning keyboard buttons to each of the arcade buttons. I'll bind the 0 key to the test and the 9 key to the service. We'll be using the 5 key for the coin, and the volume up and down will be handled by the plus and minus keys. Next I'll bind the 1 key as my player 1 start, my left mouse button as my trigger, the spacebar as my grenades, and my right mouse button as my reload. Once we have all of the in-game and menu functions bound, we'll need to click on the save settings option, and we'll be kicked back into our previous menu. 
Now that we have everything configured, let's test it out and verify that everything is in working order. To do so, simply verify that you have Terminator Salvation selected, and once verified, click on the launch game from the right side menu. For my build, it took about 30 seconds for this arcade to boot up and start. I am guessing that most people's time will vary a little, based on the hardware they use. As you can see, the arcade has booted up without any issues, and so far our bindings are working, and I am able to access the player 1 start by pressing the 1 key on my keyboard. Let's jump in and demo this cab just a little, as I'd like for you to get a feel of what it's like demoing this game with a keyboard and mouse. If you've ever played first-person shooters on a PC, then this style of control shouldn't be too far off from what you're used to. The aiming aspect of this arcade with a mouse is very similar. However, you will continue to have the same arcade-controlled movement as you change scenes when the arcade progresses. All in all, this seems to work very well for me, and I find that when demoing the cab, this style of control is very comfortable and enjoyable. In actuality, I think most cabs perform pretty poorly when operated with a keyboard and mouse, but I have to admit that light gun arcades seem to convert reasonably well. Let's exit our demo and set up a gamepad. To do so, we'll wish to change the input API, and this setting will be found in the game setting options directly under the game executable option. When selecting the input API option, you should get a drop-down menu, and for my controller, I'll be selecting the direct input option. If you ever have an issue configuring a controller, check these settings. Different controllers have different needs, and you can always revert back if you need to. After saving, we'll be kicked back out to the previous menu. Here we'll want to again select controller setup, and once in the controller menu, we'll find that all of our settings from the previous input API are gone and a blank binding canvas is waiting for us to provide bindings. For this controller setup, I'll continue to use the 0 and 9 keys on my keyboard for the test and service buttons. I'll set the coin button to the corresponding button on my gamepad, and I'll again set the volume keys to the plus and minus keys on my keyboard. I'll now program the start button to its corresponding gamepad location, then the trigger to my gamepad B button, the grenades to the Y button, and the reload to the A button. The last item we need to bind is controlling our aim. To do this, we'll bind the player 1x and y axis to the x and y axis on the left stick of our gamepad. These binds will let us manage the arcade service menu with the keyboard, but let us control and use the in-game actions via the gamepad. Now that we have the gamepad configured, let's save some time and jump into a demo. I'd like to start by saying this is not my native gaming setup. I guess I'm saying I'm not great with console controllers. However, if that style of control is what you prefer, this should work for you very well. The controls are very responsive, and because you get to make the bindings up as you go, you're able to configure your controller in a number of ways, making for a very enjoyable experience. Let us now move to light gun controllers, and for this video I'd like to demo and review how I'm testing the Sindon light gun controller. I believe that most people enjoy demoing a cab with controls that match the cab they are working with versus retrofitting a keyboard mouse or gamepad to demo a game. Sindon offers a nice option for this. I do feel it's important to say that Sindon is not a sponsor of this video, and at the time of making this video, I am not affiliated with Sindon in any way. Any and all opinions in this video are mine and given freely. I also feel I should point out that I did take part in the Sindon Light Gun Indiegogo back in August of 2020. However, when I did get my Sindon, I did nothing with it. My Sindon collected dust until 2024. I dusted off my Sindon this year for the first time, and I've got to say it's a nice pairing for many games. For demoing the Sindon on the Terminator Salvation Cab, I'd like to move us over to my home theater PC, commonly referred to as an HTPC. This system is a 6th generation i5, running Windows 10 Enterprise Edition, paired with a strange amount of RAM and a low-profile NVIDIA GeForce 1050 Ti. Basically, it's a ton of leftover parts that have been donated to the channel paired with some crap I've collected over the years. I'm not going to go in-depth on the basic setup of the Sindon Light Gun, as that is worth its own video, but I do wish to say the basics of this technology are of a camera, giving the mouse cursor orientation and direction based on the camera's view of field in relation to a white bezel that is overlaid over the monitor by the Sindon software. When pairing the Sindon Light Gun with TechnoParrot, we will need to make some changes to our setup. This setup differs as we'll need to enter the game settings menu and verify that under the input API that we have raw input selected. We'll also want to have the windowed option selected, 
use custom resolution selected, and verify that you have the correct resolutions listed under width and height. This should be everything we need under our game settings section. Let's now move to the controller configuration area, and here you'll see that I've continued with using the 0 and 9 keys on my keyboard for the test and service buttons. The coin button will be bound to the Sindom controller, and the volume selections will be bound again to the plus and minus keys on the keyboard. With the start, trigger, grenades, and reload buttons all being bound to the Sindom controller. You'll also need to make sure and verify that you do have the Sindom light gun selected under the player 1 light gun drop down menu. Let's now move over to the Sindon Light Gun software. Again, I'm not going to go into the configuring of this program or updating the firmware, as that would necessitate its own video. However, we do need to turn the white bezel that borders the screen, giving the light gun's camera proper orientation. With the border turned on, we'll use the Sindon controller to start the arcade and control the arcade menu. Techno Parrot configures well with this controller. I will say that you do need to make sure that the Sindon Light Gun and its corresponding program are started and active when Techno Parrot starts, or Techno Parrot will not see the Sindon controller. If Techno Parrot doesn't recognize your controller, make sure that it's plugged in and active, then restart Techno Parrot. This will ensure that it sees the controller and knows that it is available to be used. Now, let's jump into some gameplay and review our conclusions. As you can see, we have total control of this arcade with this Sindon light gun. Between our three options of game controllers covered in this video, the Sindon is by far the best, giving us the closest to an authentic arcade experience. However, each offering does offer a playable experience. A few things to keep in mind when working with the Sindon is consistency in your environment. Let me explain. Personally, I found that this controller works best if you're more than 8 feet away from the monitor. This wasn't a big deal for me but my smaller kids seem to move closer and closer to the monitor with each shot. If you're mindful of this, then it will not be an issue. I also saw that I needed to set the Sindon up in as close to the environment he'll be playing in as possible. Basically, if your game room has a ton of lights, configure it with the lights on. If your game room is dark, then configure it in the same way. And of course, make sure to configure the light gun at an appropriate distance too. If you configured your Sindon for 8 feet, then when demoing your arcade, make sure you're at 8 feet. Same thing if you're configured for 12 feet, be sure to be demoing the arcade at the same distance. In truth, for this video, I'm closer than I should be, but I'm limited because of filming. Not that I'm complaining, I'm just saying my experience was more enjoyable when not coupled with limitations. My aim was better too, that's all. If you've made it this far through this video, then I'd like to thank you for checking it out. I truly hope you enjoyed it and found it informative. If you did, or hell even if you didn't, please consider subscribing to the channel if you've not done so. You can also always leave this video a like or even turn those notifications on. If you have a question, please leave it in the comments, and I'll do my best to answer it. Each of these actions is small and only takes a second of your time, but those small actions help this small channel beat the YouTube algorithms. Thank you.